so he asked like what is this how is this possible so then his guru goes on to say first of all body doesn't have a death i mean sorry soul doesn't have death it is just the body that dies we i doesn't have death the i moves on and the i can take various forms based on your energies your powers so he's like i left this body here two months ago and then i moved on to the next plane of existence he's like what is that plane called he's like what plane we live in this universe is the physical universe he says the next universe the better one not necessarily better but that is called the astral universe so he talks about another universe called the astral universe and he says that inside the astral universe there are again so many planes of existence there are so many planets and he tells him that in the astral universe there are many stars and many planets but none of the planets are barren like in the solar system if you see jupiter or saturn or mars doesn't have life or even the moon doesn't have life barren dead rock planets so he says in the astral universe it is teeming with life there is no planet which is dead all planets have life in the astral universe and yogananda is just keenly listening okay continue so and yukteswar giri tells him that in astral universe again there are infinite planes of existence infinite planets in each planet there are the millions of types of species there but only thing is it is an astral plane it is not a physical plane so do they have a body yes all those species also have a body but it is not a physical body he says all of them have something called an astral body and yogananda says what is astral body to explain because these things cannot be explained but yukteswar giri tells him that it is not made of physical matter it is a body made of prana prana is the life force and in the book yogananda uses the word life trons as if there are pa- there are particles so prana so the particles made of life the life particles they have a body with that they don't have a physical particle body they have a life particle body he says okay so where exactly have you gone so yukteswar giri tells uh, that when i was on earth my guru yukteswar giri's guru he is talking about my guru or god gave me a purpose of enlightening the beings of earth but now i got promoted so i have moved on to the astral plane now my job is to guide people at the astral plane to again move up the ladder further and what is that up the ladder what next so yukteswar giri goes on to say that beyond the astral universe there is something called a causal universe so on earth people the spiritual beings are who have realized that this physical world is just an illusion i want to go ahead will strive so that the next birth is on an astral planet and people on the astral planet after many many births and deaths spiritually spiritual beings on the astral planet then make an effort to get rid of the astral body and the astral planes of existence and move on to the causal planes of existence so yogananda is just listening in amazement like what is this logic because we can't understand this physical universe correctly this guy is talking about multiverse he is talking about astral universes then he is talking about causal universes and he says what's the difference between physical astral and causal and his guru tells him physical is gross physical whereas astral is mental or emotional whereas causal is thought or at idea level this is what he explains difficult to understand what exactly he is talking about but yes he explains these things also in detail later but not in the three pages which i read yesterday in the in these three pages he then talks about saying that i am now on a planet called hiranya loka hiranya typically translates into gold so he's talking about a very shining planet he talks about i'm on a planet called hiranya loka and he says that who are there who are there on that planet he says lot of people are there on that planet lot of souls are there on that planet but how do you get entry into hiranya loka he says that only those people are given entry into hiranya loka if you leave this body on earth consciously through nirvikalpa samadhi nirvikalpa samadhi means what 
he explains that there are two types of samadhi is called savikalpa and nirvikalpa he says savikalpa samadhi basically means after millions and countless births and deaths on earth a spiritual being comes to a point where he understands what is the spiritual being even you and me by the way all of us are spiritual beings just that you and me are not consciously making any effort to get out of this cycle we are just happy enjoying the luxuries which are around us we want a healthy body happy life a good home and luxuries happiness uh, expectations being fulfilled nice food we are just happy with this what if someone comes and tells you all this is nothing there are bigger happinesses okay out there <clears throat> so you and me also can spiritually realize or become that so those beings who after countless births and deaths on earth or physical planes finally realize that there's nothing here there is there are better things beyond they sit in meditation and exit their soul from the body consciously that process is called savikalpa samadhi so but his guru says savikalpa samadhi is great you have realized that there's nothing on this physical universe and you consciously so it is not a suicide by the way in meditation you sit and guide your soul out of your body because you are no more interested in this body and the physical world your desires are extinguished in the at the physical level you don't crave for anything physical anymore you don't crave for this body nor this universe so you consciously exit the body <clears throat> he says this is called savikalpa samadhi but even savikalpa samadhi people are not allowed into hiranyaloka only nirvikalpa samadhi people are allowed and he says then what is this nirvikalpa samadhi and he goes on to explain that nirvikalpa samadhi is the next level spiritual evolution where you are born on this physical planet died on this physical planet millions of times but now you have realized that this universe has nothing for me i want to exit but still you do not exit in savikalpa samadhi you are making a conscious effort for the soul to exit out of your body in nirvikalpa you are not making any effort to exit you have accepted your body the way it is you are going on doing your regular physical duties on a daily basis but with complete god realization self realization in your heart so in nirv in savikalpa you had this craving to get out from this physical world whereas in nirvikalpa even though you know that all this physical universe is futile you have accepted god's will that there must be a purpose for which i have been sent here i'll just fulfill the purpose and wait for my time but i am always self realized i don't have to exit this body for self realization i am in this body this typically reminds me about saints like ramana maharshi ramana maharshi who was being called as bhagwan by his devotees was a living talking walking god he is in the physical form but without physical bounds there are many such saints uh, sai baba shirdi of shirdi is said to be one such similarly there are saints like uh, uh, neem karori baba neem karori baba also uh, is said to be such a person who has attained nirvikalpa samadhi meaning you are in the physical body you are acting as if you are a normal person and everything but then inside you are totally self realized every second of your existence you are self realized but still you do not want to exit because they are so desireless they have left even that desire to exit so he says only people who have attained nirvikalpa samadhi on the physical plane are given an entry visa into hiranyaloka only such people so highly evolved spiritual beings but then his guru yukteswar giri goes on to say that but even there there are desires just like here there are desires there also there are hate there is hatred there also there are wars there also he says on the astral planet there are wars people are fighting there also just like here just that the wars are at a much bigger level he talks about weapons there but not made of physical matter but mental matter he talks about weapons uh, used with the help of mantras or just mental concentration weapons he talks about weapons made of not physical particles but prana life particles but wars are happening there also hatred is there there also there also desires are there there also sense fulfillment objects are there but all of them are at a very high level 
because those pleasures and pains are no more physical they are astral so he talks about that level and he also talks about infinite universes within the astral plane and he talks about infinite types of species with infinite type of bodies which uh, uh, you know uh, are made of these life trons or prana and he says just like on earth we have so many species like it's a single planet but we have cows we have tigers we have insects we have mosquitoes we have humans he says on each astral planet there are multiple species depending on their karma they take up that body then he goes on to say that i am helping astral beings who are fed up with the astral plane and who are now trying to exit the astral body so that their next births can be into the causal universes or the causal planes and he also talks about there are people in hiranyaloka who were actually causal universe beings but because of their karma have been fallen have fallen down into astral planes so basically from the physical planes you go up graduate upwards towards astral planes but you can graduate downwards from the physical planes to even further lower realms which in sanskrit or hindu culture are called naraka narak narak is hell so what is hell of course there are there so much hell on earth also but there are actually physical realms universes which are more hellish than earth so you can fall there or you can rise into the heavens in fact ipteshwaragiri uses the word heaven also saying that heaven is also a part of the astral universe but there also there are desires and there is a body just that made of prana it's an astral body so i am now in this life uh, i am on hiranyaloka and i'm helping astral beings who have uh, evolved to such spiritual level where even their astral desires astral pleasures they are done with they are trying to move on to the causal plane i am helping those guys now this is what was yesterday's three pages which talks about so many things you see it again lot of people may not believe these things but yogananda did not write these things to impress you and me and yogananda wrote this more than 100 years ago okay he is no more there and those days there was neither youtube nor facebook nor instagram this whole uh, uh, thing to become viral was not there and yogananda did not do any of this to go viral all this was basically done so that he could share what he has seen what he has learned what he has had the kind of experiences he had in his life with his guru but this talks about very deep uh, truths so when you are looking at this physical universe as the be all and end all of everything here you have to wake up to the reality that no this is one speck of dust in fact yukteswar giri compares the sizes of physical universe with astral universe i'm talking about the whole universe okay not earth he talks about when you see a hot air balloon right a hot air balloon rises up tourists sit in a basket if you have seen videos in turkey and some other places there are these hot air balloons huge hot air balloon which goes up slowly with a small basket underneath so he compares the whole physical universe with that small basket and the astral universe with that a uh, hot air balloon which is hundreds of times bigger than the basket he says it's so much bigger and he says there are uh, it's very clean all the astral planes are extremely clean there is no dirt there is no dust there is no filth why because all filth dirt dust is physical right there there is no physical matter itself he says they are extremely clean he talks about rivers and rainbow colors he talks about lakes with opals in it he talks about very bright seas he says it is so much be- more beautiful like you can't even imagine it how it is so he talks about and but he also talks about astral planes where <clears throat> it is hellish he also talks about astral planes of that sort where within the astral beings again the lower spiritual level astral beings go into the lower planes of astral existence but even those planes are better than earth basically they are they are hellish from the astral standpoint but they are still better than earth so he talks about these things so he talks about multiverse he talks about parallel universes he is not just talking about time travel he is talking about traveling across multiverses and that's how he traveled is it not he traveled in fact einstein says nothing can travel faster than night light okay so something can travel right and that something is called nothing then yeah that nothing can travel faster than right correct then what is that nothing that nothing is only god 
that nothing is only the so-called atma. You can have a weight to an electron, proton and a neutron. But what is the weight of nothing? That nothingness is what is the goal of spiritual realization. So eventually, Yukteswari tells that even causal universes, you have a causal body. Even that is not the permanent truth, the ultimate truth. You have to give up your causal body also. And in fact, I remember reading not yesterday, but in this book last time, that on earth we have five senses. The sense of sight, the sense of smell, the sense of hearing, the sense of touch and the sense of taste. Pancha Indriya, we call it Pancha Indriya. But on astral universe, apparently there are 16 senses. Now we can't even imagine what they are. Apparently on the causal plane, there are 32 senses. So what all kinds of experiences can be gained there? Which means the pleasure is going to be very high, but the pain is also going to be very high, is it not? The more sensory perception, the more pleasure, the more the pain. So even at causal universes, there are so many enjoyments. So he says, you have to become desireless even in the causal universe to give up the causal body. Then you merge into that effulgent light, which is the truth. Until then, the cycle of births and deaths keeps on continuing, not just on the physical plane. After physical, on the astral plane, millions of births and deaths. Until you realize the futility of astral universe, move on to the causal universe, infinite lives and births, their lives and deaths, until you understand the futility of the causal universe and the causal body. And you finally go to that nothingness state. No body, no desire, nothing. So this is what it is. In fact, this book, Autobiography of a Yogi, is a masterpiece. Because Yogananda meets hundreds of sages and saints. Some of them are miraculous. They perform miracles. Some of them are just in their samadhi. Some of them are speakers who will tell you. Some of them are maunis who do not talk about their experiences. Beautiful, beautiful book. If you really want to understand a little bit of Indian culture and the Hindu culture, and what kind of base the civilization was built upon. You, this book, Autobiography of a Yogi, is a must read. Don't miss it. It's a beautiful collection. Like, have it. And I'm sure every once in a few years, you would like to revisit it. Like, look at me. I'm revisiting this book of after almost 15 years and still amazed at it. Correct? If nothing, no, I don't believe in all this. Okay, at least for the nice stories. But... Yogananda's English is impeccable. So I would suggest keep the thesaurus or the dictionary open with you. Lot of words will be very high uh, standards in English. But it's a beautiful book to read. So until the next time with the next topic. See you guys. Bye-bye.